Hey guys, how you doing? It's uh, Pastor Ryan here, um, ready for another awesome meeting uh, today. Uh, so I want to welcome you, all those that are watching uh, via whatever devices you're using at the moment. Um, tonight, I'm actually going to be talking about what I got from Sunday's sermon. Um, for those of you that were at Sunday, uh, listen to the message uh, preached by my, my wife, Jacqueline. Uh, just lift your hands. Yep, I see all those hands. Well, wow, that's a lot of you. So good. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it was an awesome message about a relationship with God. And um, I wanted to uh, share with you what I got from it. But yeah, from what I got from it, uh, but I felt was something that would bless you as well. And um, so we'll, we'll get into this and um, yeah, see how we go. Um, let's open our Bibles to Matthew chapter five. I'm going to read, uh, just open up with this uh, passage of scripture. Um, and yeah, we'll go from there. So Matthew chapter five and verse six says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Uh, I'm reading from a ESV, so if your Bible says something a little different, um, that's okay. Um, it should say something similar. But blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled, satisfied. Um, uh, that there is what I actually got from Sunday's message um, about being hungry for God and thirsty for God. Um, now, what I found in myself, sort of cutting to the chase a little bit, and I will expound from there, um, was recognizing uh, the symptoms or the signs of hunger and thirst. Um, because as we've just read, when I am hungry and thirsty, if I come to the right source, I am going to be satisfied. I don't know about you, uh, but I know for myself, uh, being satisfied is actually a big deal. Uh, so when I want to sit down and have a meal, uh, I want to be satisfied. So whether that is that the meal tasted delicious, whether the meal or what I'm drinking or eating at the time is full of nutrition and just good, healthy stuff, and I'm drinking it and it may taste, you know, a little on the funky side, but I know it's good stuff gummy. I'm satisfied. Um, but even at the end of the meal, I want to be uh, filled, not obviously, obviously overfilled, um, but just where I'm, I'm satisfied. And um, so just kind of using these analogies, I guess you could say, uh, about um, when, when one's hungry or thirsty, that they are satisfied. I know when I'm working outside or doing a, a, you know, an outdoor job, uh, it's hot and, and you, you know, you're getting sweaty and uh, that kind of stuff. But then you, you come in, you, you go to the fridge and you grab a cold drink, whether it's a juice or just even water. And, you know, you fill up that glass and it's just like, glug, glug, glug. And, and, but it's like, ah, it, there's, there's a satisfaction about it. Um, and what I found with Sunday's message is um, just how satisfying it sounded. Um when, when um, you know, we, we come to God, when we uh, have our priorities right, um, when we recognize these symptoms, which I'm, I'm going to go into uh, in a bit, um, the, the symptoms or the signs of that hunger and that thirst. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and put it in a nutshell, the message. Uh, but what, you know, the, and this is in my words, um, the simplicity of enjoying a rich, deep and close relationship with God. Um, I know as Christians, this is something that we desire. And uh, I don't know about you, but uh, for me, that message is very uh, stimulating. Uh, it's very inspirational. Um, it was, you know, it was almost creating a hunger and a thirst, um, which uh, that's, that's what being around men and women, of, women uh, men and women of God that are full of faith uh that you can see that the joy and the peace of god in and around them it's just kind of flowing from their pores um how you get around these people and and there can be um different uh responses or reactions and i know uh, uh rev jack or pastor jack was uh, uh she actually 
uh, I guess you could say, claused uh, her message uh, by saying or just putting out there the purpose of the message, um, that it wasn't to make anybody feel bad or uh, feel like, oh, see, it counts me out or, um, oh, my gosh, like, you know, uh, I, I feel so backslidden, um, uh, you know, or, or yeah, that sense or feeling of being backslidden, um, whether there's even guilt or shame associated with it. Um, because in your mind, your relationship with God is not, say, where you'd like it to be or how it was described on Sunday. And um, now I'm actually going to, yeah, let you in on the, the, the point of the message early. Um, but what now I see that is, is hunger and thirst. That when there's any kind of like conviction or you feel like, uh, you know, you sort of, uh, how did she describe it? It was like, um, uh, you know, you're, you're getting a bit judgy. Like, you know, you, you, you know, what are you saying that you're better than me? And what are you saying? Like, it's that, that kind of stuff, but it's more coming from you. It's got nothing to do with that person. They are just sharing like the good news and like sharing the good news out in the world, people are going to have different responses and reactions to it. Um, when, when you shine light in a room uh, and the room's been pitch black and then you shine a light, it's like, wow, it can be quite intense um, to where it's almost painful for your eyes. Um, and so you have someone sharing, uh, you know, things like their relationship with God, what God's been doing in their life. Um, there can be the temptation to take it uh, the wrong way. Instead of being happy for them, you're looking at yourself and, how bad that's making you feel uh, to the point where, um, you know, you, you can get a bit judgy and who do you think you are, or you feel really dumb about yourself. You kind of just feel depressed or just, uh, you know, I suck, I suck kind of thing. And, um, but what I want to share with you is, and, um, and I, I'm, I didn't feel that I actually felt uh, like a, a joy, a hope, a longing, even an excitement in the message. And I know there'll be some others that felt the same way. Um, but both of those, both of those responses, what I was getting from the message and what God was speaking to me about, both of those are showing a hunger and a thirst for God. Um, so, um, you know, so if, if, if you were one of those sitting in on Sunday's message and were kind of, you know, feeling a bit squirmy, a bit uncomfortable, getting a bit of, you know, the, the sweaty lip or the sweaty brow, just like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, she's speaking to me, she's speaking to me. And it's, um, she was speaking, yes, but it was actually the Lord speaking through her um, and to to create or incite hunger. Um, and the Bible says that as brothers and sisters in the Lord, we should be provoking one another to love and good works. Um, so what was happening on Sunday was that provocation, um, which was so awesome. Um but, you know, one of the questions I do want to ask is, how did you respond? And not to feel dumb if you, if they were kind of like, I'll, I'll say, quote, unquote, negative responses. Um, but, you know, we could, because they have kind of like negative connotations, as opposed to, say, the positive ones of joy and excitement. Um, but for you, like, even if you had those ones, what I want to uh, share with you today is that they are signs and symptoms. Both of them are, but it's, you know. Uh, including negative ones, are signs of, of uh, hunger and thirst. Um, so recognizing the hunger and the thirst. Uh, let's jump over. Uh, we're going to go back uh, to Psalms. Actually, I've got a, a little ribbon there. Uh, Psalm 107. Um, I was only going to read a few verses, but as I uh, sat down in preparation to do this recording, I actually felt to to read the um, uh, well, a lot of this, this passage or this uh, chapter uh, I think it's like 43 uh, verses but I'm gonna I'm gonna read I don't know about half of it so we'll start at verse one and uh, but there's verses five and six and verse nine that speaks of hunger and thirst but I want to read a bit more and then yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna um, elaborate on that as we get there uh, so 107 Psalm 107 verse one. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good for his steadfast love endures forever let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. 
Some wandered in desert wastes, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. So not just physical hunger and thirst, but talking about soul hunger and thirst, um, which is really what I'm talking about uh, uh, today. Uh, so hunger and thirsty, their soul fainted within them. Verse 6, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. For he satisfies, there's that word again. <clears throat> we read it in Matthew uh, 5, no, yeah, Matthew 5, verses 6. Um, verse 6, sorry. For he satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Uh, verse 10. For some sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of God and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard, hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and burst their bonds apart. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men. For he shatters the doors of bronze and cuts in two the bars of iron. Verse 17. Some were fools through their sinful ways. And because of their iniquities suffered affliction. They loathed any kind of food. And they drew near to the gates of death. Verse, uh, verse uh, 19. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them. And delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of men, and let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of his deeds in songs of joy. Um, we'll stop there. Um, but as you can kind of gather from Psalm 107, it's um, really it's talking about when we stray away from the Lord, uh, and then trouble happens. We're distressed. Uh, we're shackled, we're in bondages, uh, uh, we're shipwrecked, or um, what, what was the other one? Like uh, just iniquities and affliction, we're, we're suffering. Um, looks like the laptop is frozen, so hopefully this is still recording. Um, if not, uh, I'll go over what we're going over. <laughs> um, I'll just check it actually. Okay, we might be back, so... I think the laptop froze a little bit there. Um, anyway, I was describing about Psalm 107 and um, uh, just the, the uh, what it's describing to us. And it's when we talk, we're, we're with the God and then we turn away from God. We go back to sin or um, um, our hearts are, are moved away. But what I, what I want to point out here is uh, when, whenever we do that, um, we are... Um, trying to satiate ourselves with the world, with sinful behavior, uh, with kind of going our own way, not even kind of, we're just going our own way. When we do that, we, we, we think we are partaking of something that satisfies. But as we know, being sinners before or being of the world before and praise God through the blood of Jesus Christ, he redeemed us from darkness and translated us into his kingdom of light so we're no longer of darkness we're never of the light um we we we, we feel like we are but in essence we're actually starving ourselves it's like um people that want to just eat junk food um, um or they're eating just you know i don't know rationing things out and they're not actually getting enough calories or, or whatever the case may be but they're being malnourished um, so I kind of feel that, you know, in that sense, we're, we're not eating enough or we're eating too much of the wrong thing. Either way, we're being malnourished. Um, it, we're not, we're not taking care of our, say our bodies. And in the same way, when we choose to, um, do our own way or go our own way or, um, whatever the case may be, um, uh, what we're actually doing is we're, we're starving ourselves of life we're, we're eating on death but death never satisfies 
Um, so what I'm actually just I'm having a bit of a chuckle because I just heard our washing machine finish its spin cycle, and uh, hopefully that's the end of it. Yes, it is. Um, but anyway, <clears throat> you know I'm making sure you guys not being distracted, but I'm being distracted myself. Anyway, um, so when we go our sinful way, or when we're going our own way, or or, or, or doing this sort of stuff, we're actually starving ourselves. And it's once we come back to God, that's when we're actually satisfied. Um, and the, the message on Sunday was, was, was to me and, and our prayer is that hopefully it was to, to everyone so encouraging that in Christ Jesus, there's life, anything to do with God, it's life, it's abundance, it's, it's things that are good. I think we actually read that. Um, yeah, uh, verse nine of Psalm 107, for he satisfies the longing soul and the hungry solely fills with good things. Um, and, you know, what, uh, <clears throat> uh, what what provoked in me was, was like a, like a newfound hunger. And I say, dude, I want, I want more. Um, you know, we can sometimes in our relationship with God kind of plateau and, you know, like look little blips or whatever, but it's kind of plateaued. It's not kind of like not going anywhere. Um, and I liken this to my relationship with my wife, Jacqueline, who you, you um, uh, were in attendance when she preached on Sunday, <clears throat> or for those of you that were there, um, uh, there can be seasons where we can get busy, um, you know, we can be distracted with a lot of things, um, and it's like the relationship kind of plateaus, and and um, and then there, become, there comes a longing, uh, <clears throat> and it's like, ah, oh, I miss my wife, or there comes like a frustration even, and it's like, ah, oh, and we don't know what's going on, there's kind of the emotions can even run a little high and that could be say for for the women but it could also be for the men there can be a an emotional frustration and um and there's like a like a boredom as jack was talking about on sunday and i'm going to go into a bit, a bit later um <clears throat> describing some of the symptoms and the uh, the signs of of hunger and thirst um so when it when it comes to this um understanding and just recognizing that um, that the, the, say the world in itself, they're starving for things that satisfy, but what they're finding is nothing in the world actually satisfies. Um, they can even have relationships in the world, but they still don't satisfy. They don't, they don't just like, they don't, they don't cut it. Um, and then we can have relationships, but they're so much, much more glorious. And why is that? Well, it's because we go to God first. And um, that's one of the the, um, the points that I got from um, uh, the message on Sunday. Um, or what I was encouraged to was being satisfied in the Lord first. So when I feel a, a longing or, or a, a, instead of going to other people or other things, um, I'm going to go to the Lord first. Um, so at the end of this message, I've, I've got uh, one or two questions. Well, one question, but I could make it in a, in a couple. Um that you can then discuss at the end uh, about practical things that you're going to put in place, how you are going to be satisfied in the Lord, how you're going to satisfy your hunger and your thirst, what things you're going to put in place. And uh, as I go through what, uh, what I got on um, Sunday, uh, hopefully it'll provoke some things in you, things that you want to put in place. <clears throat> uh, so being satisfied in the Lord first or having my soul quenched in the Lord, so, I mean, what does that even look like? Because that can sound like spiritual talk. It's like, yeah, I'm just going to be satisfied in the Lord first. And it's like, yep, okay, so so what does that actually look like? So, you know, so, you know, I can say that, know what I know what I mean, but then you'll, you'll be hearing me say it and go, what do you mean by that? Um, so, um, so to be replenished in him, I'm going to replenish myself by casting my cares and my burdens. Um, uh you know, it's, it's something where I'm being replenished. I'm being satisfied. I'm coming to God kind of deburdening, uh, like losing things that are, you know, weighing me down and, and um, causing uh, stress or anxiety, fears, um, uh, just different things like that. Um, another way that I'm going to be satisfied in the Lord first is trusting in his wisdom and his leading. Now, where do I get his wisdom and leading? Well, first off, it could be the Bible, the word of God. Uh, it can be coming to our church services, our Bible studies, our men's meetings or women's meetings. Uh, it can be through discipleship. Um, it can be those things. Those things are 
very helpful to learn God's wisdom, his heart and his leading, uh, his heart and mind on, on just all things to do with life. Um, but the obvious other one um, that we can probably neglect because, I don't know, in our minds we can deem it more uh, untangible or, um, you know, it's uh, 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 sort of unattainable. Um, but that's just spending time with the Lord. Um, obviously the word of God and praying, um, but just worshiping God, but just talking to the Lord. Uh, so trusting in his wisdom and leading. So I cast my cares upon the Lord, uh, the different situations I might have going or <clears throat> problematic things or problems that I'm unsure about, don't know what to do, um, but commit it to God. I'm going to go to God and say, hey, Lord, well, hey, here's my issues and here's my problems. And, um, and now I'm asking for your wisdom and your leading. And as I just place that before the Lord, I'm like, Thank you so much, Father. Um, uh, you know, I, I I wait on and I could wait there at the time and just worship God and just be in prayer and be uh, thankful. And as I'm um, just, you know, meditating on the Lord and how good he is, like, which is what the psalmist is trying to say. Oh, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Um, uh, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Um, and it's just kind of that, that constant, Man, God is so awesome. He is so epic. Um, and so as I'm doing that, um, then an answer can come. Uh, and a, a thought can come or a, some directional leading. And I go with it and I trust it. So trust in it. Um, and then obviously then being thankful. Um, I could be a lot more thankful, I reckon, in my life. Um, you know, I don't know. It's not that I'm taking things for granted, but my actions can come across that way. Excuse me. Um, um, so I can be a lot more thankful just in the little things, but, um, I want to find things to be thankful for. And, um, um, and especially when I'm casting my cares on the Lord and my burdens, I'm deburdening on the Lord. And then I sort of feel that lightness come upon me. So, oh, thank you, Lord. Um, like the psalmist, because I mean, these are some stressful things that he's talking about, about being, you know, left in the wilderness and or wandering in the wilderness or in the desert wastes. Um, and, and finding a way to a, uh, for a city to dwell in, hungry and thirsty. and um, But then as you get through, then they call upon the Lord in their distress and their trouble, and God delivers them. Uh, and then the next one, and you can continue reading it, Psalm 107 from verse 23 down to 43. And it's just similar things, this, this little um, snippets of trouble, distress, um, you know, and then calling upon the Lord and being then satisfied, being delivered, being set free, being filled um, which is so incredible. So uh, recognizing the signs of hunger and thirst. Now, um, in Jack's clause, actually, as I, I mentioned before, um, she was actually describing, and I don't know if she realized this or not, but describing uh, certain ways indicating uh, hunger and thirst. So um, um, because you got to understand when, when somebody's critically judging, uh, like somebody's walk with the Lord or are oh, you just being super spirit or, you know, um, um, you know, holier than thou and uh, all that kind of stuff. And, but, but, but they're being sort of critically judgmental. Um, typically that can be there's jealousy there or there's pride there, or there's a sense of just the unrest and unease because they don't have that kind of relationship or they don't kind of, they don't have that life with the Lord. Um, but again, what was so encouraging about Sunday's message was that life is for every believer. It's actually for all the unbelievers too, but you know they've got to first repent of their sins and come to the Lord. But this is something that God wants to enjoy with all of us. And, um, and that's, that's the encouraging thing. Um, so even that, like that revelation, really? Um, that's, that's kind of that, that hunger like uh, of, I want that. I need that in my life. Um, uh, and, and if you had sort of the, the more, I'll say negative, but uh, the neg more the negative ones, or it's like, oh, man, I'm missing out. And I don't know, you just kind of, you, you tend to go that way. So, you know, some people are more optimistic and they tend to be in there. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to come, come after it. And, and some are a bit more pessimistic and a bit more, well, well you know, I don't know, is anything going to change in my life? Like just, I've just been sitting here and running around. Um, you know, it can be more on the pessimistic side. Uh, um, but again, Either way, if we go to the Lord with any of those, come to God, we're all going to be satisfied in him. 
Um, so recognizing the signs of hunger and thirst. So boredom, um, when you're bored and you're just kind of like, you know, and then you go to entertainment or something like that to, again, try to satisfy. And yes, it could be fun for a time and da, da, da. But really, at the end of the day, uh, uh, um, it is there like true satisfaction. Um, now, it, it could have a sense of it, like some things, right? Um, I mean, it's simple things obviously that can be tantalizing to the flesh but at the end of the day there's the guilt and the shame and the the burden that you carry then afterwards and <clears throat> um you know feeling bad about it and knowing it was wrong and you know all that kind of stuff um but there are other things entertainment like just you know youtube uh a little you know um what do you call it? just youtube like you know just watching this person do that or this thing or that clip and you know what other people are doing in their lives or you know fun things or you know whatever youtube stuff you watch like um you know looking up you know of interests and different things hobbies that you might be into um uh, but movies you know gaming jamming um you know with consoles computers and phones like you know facebook instagram there's so many things that we can go to to try and satisfy that that boredom or even you know that that dissatisfaction that you feel um but what God is 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 uh, like throwing out to us as a, I'd say as a lifeline, um, but uh, as a as a like an invitation. It's like, hey, how about come to me first? Um, how about uh, you know? I don't know. It's it's just it's just weird how our flesh can think sometimes. Where you know, to be honest, some people might even be thinking like, well, read the Bible, uh, man, like you know. Um, or, you know, praying, like, uh, you know, worshiping God, like for some people reading, praying or worshiping God, it's like, oh man, I love it when I get into that stuff. Um, um, but then if you've been in Christianity for a while, then you can kind of get a bit like, uh, I don't know, you just, you want something a bit more buzzy. You want something a bit more, you know, and, um, and, uh, but, but I've found even like, say with food, um, you know, gonna, gonna talk about food, um, I can eat some fatty, greasy, oily, and it tastes delicious, and it's been deep fried or whatever, and it's just dripping with, you know, uh, had one one guy say, there's so much oil, and I could top up my car, you know, um, or run my car off it, um, but it's just, it's just that kind of food, but oh, man, it tastes good as it going down, it's juicy, and, you know, you get the stuff down your face, and I'm making people get hunger pains right now, just talking about it, Um but I can eat that, right? But then half an hour, hour, hour and a half later, you just kind of feel blur. You know what I mean? Just blur. And that's just your physical body. But then I can eat some just stuff that just gives me life. Uh, fruit. Um, uh, you know, just things that are fresh. Um, you know, uh, and I eat that stuff. And I eat that. And I can eat that in abundance. Half an hour, hour later, you know, uh, like a banana smoothie with some, you know, good stuff in there, like, you know, some berries and um, some greens, some spinach and um, uh, what's some other stuff, you know, um, not lettuce, uh, spinach, silver beet, kale, like just different things in there. And then, uh, you know, a bit of sweetness stuff, but, you know, some lemon, some ginger, like some good superfood kind of stuff. I chuck that and half an hour later, hour later, I feel ace, like I feel full of life um, because I've put life in me. Um, and the soul is very much the same. Um, and so entertainment, like, you know, da -da, and then you kind of find like, you know, your, your soul sort of, it's not like flat, like a, you know, a puncture that's flat, but it's just not full. It's just, yeah. Um, so, you, you know, you're not like depressed or dark. Um, I mean, some things can go that way, like depends what, what, what you're listening to and watching and, who, who you're allowing into your eye gates and uh, ear gates, um, it can make you feel really flat. Um, but that's typically the world. Typically the world. That's all that has to offer. Um, but you're just not feeling ace. Um, but then I feel stuff like I listen to an on-fire preacher. I, you know, I, I read some favorite Psalms or a, a, a good book that's so encouraging and uh, you know, and this again, it's just in my spare time. I'm feeling bored and I've already read the Bible this morning, but hey, I'm going to read it again and I'm going to read my favorite passages. I'm going to read some, uh, you know, favorite characters in the Bible and, and, and read about them, glean off them again and 
I'm gonna just Lord, I'm gonna just read and I want you to speak to me and and I'm 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 open and and, and ready for God to reveal something to me. Um I'm, I'm gonna go pray. Um and I just want to talk to the Lord and just offload a little bit and um uh I'm gonna uh just just spend some time with the Lord just talking to him and Lord, you know, what's some things in my life that you're not happy with or that I could grow and mature in or you know, I'm I'm getting real. I'm getting real with God. And and so in those boredom states, what what it actually is, it that the signs or symptoms of hunger and thirst, um, being dissatisfied, being troubled of soul. Um, God, that was what God was speaking to me about. Um, troubled of soul, or uh, if uh, there's stress or like a fear, um, you know, it's like oh, I don't know what's going to happen here, and I don't know what to do here, and there can be an element of fear there, and. Uh, it makes you kind of want to either put it off or, ah, you know, but you stress over it. And, um, but I'm seeing these as signs or symptoms of hunger and thirst. It's, it's like a, like a, a, like a trigger to let me know, Hey, I need to go to God. Um, Hey, I, I need to tank up on fluids. or I need to tank up on um, some good nutritious food, um, some minerals or some vitamins or something like that. My, my, my body's telling me that, you know, it's not re running at peak. Um, and, and so for the soul, uh, this is something, um, uh, you know, for us to uh, uh, consider and uh, even like, you know, uh, a highlight or remember throughout our, the, the days of our week, um, the hours in the day, uh, you know, at work or just whatever we're doing at school or at home, homeschooling, um, uh, just in, in whatever you're doing, whatever stage of life you're at right now, um, but uh, understanding and knowing these signs of hunger and thirst. Um, I mean, we're driving home uh, today, had our, uh, some errands to do uh, on our way home, uh, listening to some worship music. And uh, man, it was moving my soul and I could feel my soul and my spirit just kind of um, just loving on God and just, uh, uh, just thinking and dwelling on him. And as I'm uh, singing along with some of the songs and um uh, but my heart being moved, you know, it's, uh, you know, where I'm, I'm, I'm even getting emotional or just like, man, God, you're awesome. And, uh, just loving on God, um, but feeling my soul being nurtured, feeling my soul being replenished. Um, uh, and not that I really needed replenishing, but, but when I do those things, when I'm in the word, when I'm praying, when I'm seeking God, when I'm worshiping God, um, I'm listening to things that give me life. Um, man, I feel so satisfied. And, um, but that's God's heart uh, for you and I, is that we come to him, come to him first um, to have our hunger and our thirst satiated in him, uh, coming to him first. Um, um, yeah, so when it came, uh, when it comes to, or when it came to the message on Sunday, um, you know, what was, what was your response? Um, how did you respond to that message? Um, cause either one is showing indications of hunger and thirst. And as we humble ourselves and come before the Lord, um, and, 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 uh, 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 get satisfied in him. Um, so if you're bored, if you're dissatisfied, if you're troubled or soul, um, there's uh, fear or stress in your life. Um, those are indications of, Hey, I'm going to go to the God. I'm going to go to God. Um, I am going to. Um, well, it's not that you're going to, but seeing these as indications, seeing these as symptoms or signs of hunger and thirst um, and, and giving over to them and going to God, that's actually what's going to help. It's one of the ways that's going to help you grow in your relationship with God. Um, all the, 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 the um, advice, wisdom and counsel we've received on Sunday, um, you know, as we apply those to our lives and, um, um, that that's what's going to help us to grow in the Lord. Um, we can't just keep going about our days and thinking, you know, that there's there's a there's an off chance or an on chance. Let's say an on chance of you know then just somehow your relationship goes. Um, no, no, it's you, you've got to sow into it. I was describing my relationship with my wife, and I don't actually think I got to the point of what I was talking about before. Um, uh, but when it, when it comes to relation with her, um, there's busy seasons and stuff like that where we can, we're not sowing as much. Um, but we 
we purposely and deliberately sow into it. So we have regular dates. Every Monday is our date day. Well, I say every Monday, but there's the odd occasion when we don't. And we might shift it, move it to another day. Um, uh, but typically speaking, Monday, that's our date day. Um, so, you know, we, we uh, you know, anybody trying to contact us, um, we, we might not even look at our phones. Uh, we might just quickly check it just in case there's in some emergencies or something like that. But we want to switch off and we just switch on to each other and we really sew into each other. Um, but just throughout the day, being thankful, uh, showing gratitude, um, honoring uh, one another. Um, but say for me, um, uh, you know, saying I love her, saying how beautiful she is, saying how much she means to me, um, just constantly sewing into the relationship. Um, because how can I expect us to grow in a relationship as husband and wife, how can I expect it to remain rich or get richer, get deeper, get more intimate, to stay and remain affectionate where we're close, spirit, soul, and body? Um, how, how can I expect it to continue to be that and to grow in that if I don't put into it? Um, and it's the same with our relationship with God. We've got to, we've got to put into it. And and again, it can sound like work. You know, you got to put in. And um, but a lot of it's not really, it's not work. Um, it's, it's time. Like if we don't spend time together, um, uh, if, uh, you know, I'm not saying nice, lovely, beautiful things to her. If I'm not praising her for the awesome things that she does, if I'm not honoring her in those things, if I'm not honoring her for being the mother of my children and, you know, being my wife, like I'm not giving you that honor and stuff. Like, again, it, it's, it's, it's easy stuff. It's not like it's hard. Just, you know, I mean, some of them take seconds, um, you know, a hug, a cuddle here and there, a peck on the cheek, a peck on the lips, a, a pash, um, you know, making out somewhere like um, just things like that, where, where um, um, we're, we're sowing into each other. That's what keeps the relationship rich. And now with God, obviously, you know, we can't give God a hug. We can't give him a cuddle. We can't, you know, kiss him on the cheek and, show him uh, how much we love him, you know, personally one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but there's lots of other ways that we, we can grow in our relationship. God wants to speak to you. God wants to, as we were just reading in Psalm 107, deliver you, save you, comfort you, feed you, um, quench your thirst, um, um, grow you, mature you, give you wisdom, give you counsel. He wants to give you that, but we've got to take the time to sit to uh, um, be talking with him, but to be listening. Um, that when messages are being preached, we're listening for his word to penetrate our hearts. And yes, that's the word for you. That's my take home. I'm going to write that down and meditate on it. I'm going to think on it, dwell on it, um, like David did. Um, and obviously, he was the prime example being used for us as David's relationship with God. And as Jack was, was sharing, like we can look at David and just go, oh, man. You know, that must be for special people. And you go, well, hang on, you're special. Um, you're as special to God as David is to him. But the Bible says that the love that God the Father has for Jesus is the same love that he gives and shares with us. That that, that, that love is, is the same. He doesn't love Jesus more than us. He loves Jesus the same as us. We are special too. and But Satan can get in our heads and lie to us and tell us fibs. Um, you know, about our worthiness, um, you know, about God doesn't love me when the Bible is screaming, screaming at us. He loves us so much so that he sent his son to die for us, gave up um, a huge part of his life and, and knowing that he'd get that back, but like with a, a trillion fold, <laughs> you know, with so much souls coming with them. So, he, he's like planted a seed, but now he's reaping a heap of seeds. And you are a part of that. Praise the Lord. So Sunday's message, a fantastic reminder of what we, the sons and daughters of God, get to enjoy the relationship with our God, our relationship with our God, he desires, and through Jesus Christ, paved the way for that to happen. Now, that's a bit of a mouthful, but it's the way I wrote it down in my notes. Um, but this is the relationship the relationship. But that God desires to have with us, um, you know, let alone our desires that we want with God. God wants it with us. Um, and but Jesus Christ paved the way for that to happen, which is so cool. Um, so in closing, 
um, just uh, ask a few questions because there's no point in listening to a good message and um, and then, you know, oh man, that was so cool, so cool. Um, but then you're going to do nothing with it. So what are some practical things that you are, are doing or going to do in your life to help you enjoy this incredible relationship with God that we have? What some, what some things? And uh, for one, it could be that you start, you're going to start recognizing the signs or the symptoms of that hunger and thirst. So whenever you're bored, uh, whenever you're dissatisfied, troubled or soul, uh, where there's fear or, or, or stress or you're distressed, um, that you're going to go to God. Um, you might want to increase your word and prayer time. Um, uh, or you, you might want to, you know, uh, um, be more thankful. Um, but what are some things that you're going to put in place yourself to help uh, grow in your relationship with God, um, to walk in that freedom, that joy, that peace, that that love, that excitement, that buzz, I guess you could say, in keeping your relationship with God living, living um, in the same way that when, when it comes to my relationship with Jack, my wife, um, I want it to be alive. And I know she wants the same. Um, so that works out great. And it's the same for us with God. It's not a one-way relationship here. Oh, no, no, no. It's definitely strong one way, <laughs> God's way to us. But let's have the same intensity too, and um, or head in that direction at least. So, what are some practical things that you're going to do? Um, um, uh, things that you were encouraged by even on on Sunday's message. Um, uh, so, what's some practical things? Um, what's some ways that um, um, you know, you can increase the relationship, um, cause it to be more on fire. Um, yeah, and and uh, you know, get it to a place like. More than likely, um, it, as you listen to Sunday's message and even as you're listening to, to uh, today's message, there's things going on in your life and there's things that you, you want to do. But what's hindering you is just other things. And it's other things you're putting first. And again, switching it. So what are those things for you? I want you to get specific. And, uh, and as you, you know, um, uh, discuss it with your home group leaders, for those that are watching this, uh, for your home groups, um, you know, uh, uh, home group leader will more than likely open up for discussion, uh, but just some practical things that you you want to do. And it can be just simple little things, but as you put them into practice, it can make a huge, huge uh, uh, change, huge effect on your life. Um, so, yeah, so these are some of the things that I was encouraged by uh, through Sunday's message. Um, and that I felt to share with you, especially about the uh, signs of hunger and thirst. Um, I now look at those. So whenever I'm feeling flat, if I'm feeling, I don't know, a little stressed, um, uh, um, you know, if I, I have time to be bored or if I feel bored, um, again, I, I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah, this is, this is, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, 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 saturate or satiate myself in the Lord. I'm going to put on some worship music. I'm going to read my Bible. I'm going to, um, uh, you know, look at those things because for me, I, I see uh, uh, boredom and I'll just get busy doing something or I might entertain myself. Um, um, but again, it's just like, yeah, now nah, you know what? Go, I'm going to go God first. And uh, but you know, I'm troubled with soul. Um, things are kind of uh, getting the better of me in my soul and kind of becoming burdens, um, or just I'm feeling weighted by things. Um, now I'm going to choose to uh, go to God and just unload those, get some wisdom, get some leading, prioritize, like, you know, just follow the Lord in it and be led by him. Um, because I know that he was going to lead us by still waters and green pastures. Uh, we can lie down in green pastures and have those still waters beside us and um, uh, just where my soul is satisfied. And that's our heart for you. That's our heart for you to be satisfied. And the only way we're going to get satisfied as we all are aware and we know, it's in Jesus Christ and it's in God, our Father. Um, so, yeah, going to um, close it up there. Uh, thank you for listening, uh, for tuning in. And, um, yeah, and I pray that uh, as you discuss the practical things that you're going to do, put in place, um, things that are already in your heart that you like to do and, and, uh, and give yourself over to them. Set, them, set a time, um, you know, uh, um, 
uh, you know, help yourself make those things happen uh, because I know you'll be blessed as a result because uh, that's our heart. Um, you know, I want to enjoy a, a rich relationship with God. I know you do too. And our heart is that you do. So, hey, God bless you. Uh, thank you so much. And um, I'll, just, I'll just close in prayer very quickly. Father, we thank you. Uh, for your, your word. We thank you for your heart towards us, God, that you desire um, to have a, just an awesome relationship with us, uh, not a, not just a work one, a uh, work relationship, um, and, and not just, a, um, you know, like a, I don't know, a, um, you know, a, a, what do you call it? like a long distance relationship, a lot of close, intimate, um, uh, affectionate, where, where we can share anything, uh, that kind of relationship, Father. So, uh, but I just commit all of our lives to you, Father, that you'd help lead us uh, into this, God, uh, that we get to enjoy it while we're living on this earth, that we don't have to wait till we're, you know, cross over into eternity. But, Father, we can enjoy that right now. So I pray that blessing, Lord, grace us with that, Father, pray in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for the leading of your Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. Hey, God bless you guys. Um, yeah, enjoy your evening. Uh, enjoy your, the rest of your week. And we look forward to seeing you again. All right. God bless you guys, and we love you heaps.